What's going on guys, Dropaduski here. Today we're going to talk about crafting a physical based weapon from scratch if you've never done one before. Now this guide is intended for new players, so we're going to touch on the basics and we're kind of going to go through why you prioritize flat physical on these items, what sword to pick, and also ways to potentially craft a lower tier physical weapon that you can use that's more efficient than most uniques at a lower level. And then you can use these same practices and tools to then craft something better and better as you go through the league. Of course, as always, if you haven't seen my other crafting guides, definitely dive into them. The things that we're gonna touch on this can be related to almost any item. So we're gonna go through this step by step. Now the first thing I want to talk about is why when you're creating, when you're seeing physical weapons out there, why there's such a high priority on, on flat damage and increasing the overall flat physical DPS of said weapon or sword that you're trying to craft. Now to, to emulate or show this example, I wanted to pull up a couple of gems so we could talk about this specific section right so the effectiveness of added damage so for for this example i've got double strike here and if you look at the base stats of this gem you'll notice that there is no flat damage added right so effectiveness of added damage is way higher than in comparison i've pulled up stormbrand which is a spell it has a much lower effective effectiveness of added damage which is 40 percent but it gives you flat flat lightning damage per level Right, so as you can see, there's a difference here. So when you're theory crafting, making a spell based weapon or a wand, you're not gonna prioritize flat damage as much because it's not as effective as it is for other physical melee based gems, right? We have Earthquake here as well, has the same kind of deal. Now it does provide some flat damage based on some sort of circumstance, whereas with, with double strike against bleeding enemies and you have a chance to cause bleeding, but you're not getting it all the time. So it's really, really important when working with melee stuff to have as much flat physical damage and increasing that value as much as possible. Now with that all being covered, I wanna talk about picking a sword. Now, since Double Strike was our example, we're gonna go for one-handers. So we'd be, we'd be dual wielding with two one-handers. And the prevailing thought is that jeweled foils are the best when it comes to this. Now, you can go through this and there are lots of physical based swords whether they be just straight one-handed swords or thrusting swords. There's some that have a really nice DPS marker, but there is no other sword outside of the jeweled foil that has a high overall DPS, but also a super high attack speed, like the, the highest attack speed that you can get with a sword and also a nice crit chance. So, and then the implicit is a global crit check multiplier. Now, spiraled foils are also really good. It's marginally less less DPS, so you know if you can't afford a nice jeweled foil base, then you can go with spiraled, or if you get a drop, you can use that as one of your first crafts. But ideally, your best in slot is gonna be a jeweled foil, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. The next thing I wanna briefly discuss is, now that we've identified the effectiveness of added damage and physical is king here, I wanna talk about other multipliers that come into play when we're talking about the weapon. Now we've talked about picking the jeweled foil and that's specifically because it comes with a high base crit chance and also attack speed. Now crit chance, crit multi, and attack speed are all very, very important for affecting or raising your overall DPS when it comes to these crit based, melee based builds. So the way I like to think of it in priority is crit chance means that every time you attack, you have a chance to crit. So you want to get your crit chance high enough that you have, so for every two hits, you are guaranteed one's a crit. And in a lot of instances, you will wanna get your crit chance all the way up to you know, 60, 66%, so that you have roughly only a 33% chance that each hit isn't going to crit, right? So making sure that you have high crit chance is very, very important. Now crit multiplier, means that when you do crit, it's going to multiply the, the actual damage output. So crit multi is very important, but making sure that you have an effective amount of crit chance is super valuable. Meaning that if you don't crit, the crit multi isn't gonna do anything for you, right? So getting your crit chance up is really, really key. And typically I'm gonna target that when crafting this sword as a, you know, as a suffix, right? So I'm gonna go for crit chance. now. Attack speed is also very, very important. It's way up there, especially with something like double strike or anything. The more times you attack, 
the more damage output you're doing and the more chances you have at critting, right? So attack speed is super, super huge. So the four things that we're looking for, flat physical damage, percent increased physical damage, which will increase the overall physical based on the flat. And then we're gonna go for attack speed, crit chance, crit multi. So next up, I've gone ahead and pulled up PoE DB. So we can start looking through exactly what modifiers we'd like to get. And then we can go through the different options or combinations you can do via via different currencies for crafting or potentially using the bench or your own crafting bench in order to get yourself a really effective physical dps weapon now, now that we're looking here physical damage itself is a prefix right so if we look through on our prefix side and we're imply we're assuming that there are no there's no influence right this is just a straight up jeweled foil right so for our sake, all we care about is right here, right? So if we take a look at physical damage itself, the best in slot, right? The best roll we can get for percent physical damage by itself is Merciless, which requires an eye level 83 item, right? And it's very, very rare in comparison to the weighting of getting something like, you know, the T1 40 to 49% physical damage, right? So when we're trying to alt spam a weapon, we're looking for anything in this range. Now, early on, it can get, it's, I mean, astronomically, it's very, 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 very rare to get yourself like a perfect, you know, merciless roll here. And then if we go to flat physical damage, you can also get flaring, which is the super high. And then to also then go for attack speed. I mean, it's, it's crazy, right? Statistically. But when you're starting out and you're looking to make yourself just stronger incrementally as you're going through the league, then in targeting anything in this top three area is is going to be very beneficial for your character overall, right? These are the two main stats that I always look for. But I mean, even with some of the other ones, you know, increased physical and accuracy. If you get a real high roll here, you're getting a base 79%, you know, 75 to 79% or 65 to 74 physical damage. And then you can add more percent physical damage from your bench, right? So anytime you hit a roll with an alteration or an augmentation that's giving you a high percent physical damage, you're in the zone that I would call, you know, you have a likelihood of continuing on with that craft right so thinking about this from this perspective you want to always look for these things now the likelihood of getting these tiers is very very rare right so it's all based on waiting right and thanks to nictator from stream he's come up with this cool graph so i can kind of show you and talk about like a way for you to understand how this works you know simply right so if we're looking at waiting it's effectively like rolling, you know, a lottery, right? So when you've got your lottery and it's full, it's full of all the balls in there, you're, you're, you're rolling it out. And every time that you roll an alteration or you do some sort of crafting method, you have a chance to grab something beneficial, right? Now, the easier mods are heavier. So they sit towards the bottom, whereas the harder mods are much, much you know, they don't get caught at the bottom as easy, meaning they're very, very, they're much, much rarer and harder to grab. So um, when thinking about that, this pool, any way that we can reduce this pool is beneficial to us. And we're going to talk about how powerful the Harvest League is going to be for this, because the Harvest League is basically allowing us to just pull balls out of the out of the the lottery wheel, right? So that you have a much, much higher chance of hitting some of the prefixes that we'd like in order to be able to craft a really nice physical weapon. I would imagine that we'll see some of the best physical weapons we've ever seen out of this, this league. So the next thing I want to talk about is quality and how quality and increasing your overall quality on that weapon is very, very important. Now, what quality does, if we go back and take a look at our, our uh, jagged foil, what quality does is it increases the base physical damage of that item for every point of quality that you have, right? So if we're looking at our, our jeweled foil, let me find it again real quick. If we're looking at our jeweled foil, we can see that it's 32 to 60 at a flat range right now for 
for our example today, we can show that it's th uh, 38 to 72 with 20% quality, right? So if we're doing a comparison of the two things, it's 32 to 60 versus 38 to 72 with 20% quality. So it jacks up that base physical damage value just by adding quality to the item. So what we're gonna wanna do is always increase this to minimum of 20, which we can do with blacksmith whetstones, but if we use fossils or betrayal, we can get it much higher than that. Now, an easy way to increase the quality is just by doing your betrayals. And if we go to the Hillock rewards here, I can show you um, the crafting bench that upgrades your weapons quality to either 24, 26 or 28, respectively, depending on how, you know, if he's a tier three, if he's a general. So you can use this if you don't have access to fossils early on, right? If you're smashing betrayals and you happen to get hillock there, you can just go ahead and grab yourself 28% there if you've got him maxed out. Now, if you don't want to go that route and you hate doing betrayals, I, I'm not particularly a huge fan of it myself, you can always come into game and get yourself some perfect fossils. And with perfect fossils, you'll see this one has no quality on it. We can hit this jeweled fossil or this jeweled foil, and now it's jumped up to 26. Now this hat can go anywhere between you know 20 and 30 percent, so you can keep hitting this with perfect fossils to get it as close as possible. Typically, I like to go for anything above 27 because if I can get that, then I know that I've you know gotten as close as I can to the hillock bench without investing way too much. But I mean, it's not guaranteed, right? You just got 18 percent, right? So we can. We can get that to 20 with blacksmith whetstones and that's the max you can do with just your raw currency so remember if we're going for quality quality is super super critical on just that flat damage we're talking about those multipliers we talked about in the beginning always bring those up as much as you possibly can now what i wanted to do different in this video was we can utilize pob to basically plan out our crafts right we can also use another tool called craft of exile right now craft of exile is super super cool if we wanted to reset that reset this we can start from scratch you can pick one-handed weapons thrusting one-handed sword you can go in and pick the actual item so jeweled foil and then we're going to go with no influence here but if you wanted to we could talk about or we could plan out effectively what it would look like or how much currency it would entail to get to the point where where we're you know in a position where we want to continue crafting and going forward right so if we say uh choose which type of aff affix is opened you have a prefix available that means we could lock in like a tier three attack speed right so if we right click on this it now assumes that that's already there Right, so we don't have to worry about that. It's not part of the crafting. And now say we're going for a, a decent a decent one. We want to try and get this jeweled foil, right? So in here, it's saying it's going to take an average of 865 augs, meaning that you've got the attack speed. Now you So that's a pretty low chance, right? It's not a very, very high chance. Right now, I want to take this opportunity to talk about how powerful Harvest is going to be, right? So with Harvest, we have... I mean, they've already mentioned it in our in their last kind of write-up about it. They said the word specifically like a physical exalt, right? Especially early while leveling and then they'll get rare, meaning that you can slam the item with a physical trait, right? So if we lock in physical here, you see this has gone down to 99, right? So it's reduced the variance here at, le at least 911 tries to get it with just augmentations. Whereas if you put physical on or you're using that, you know, add a physical modifier from, I mean, we're looking at seven, right? It's very, very, it's, it's reducing that lottery pool, right? So using that as our example, if we take it, look, look, uh, look at our weights, right? So if we take a look at our weights with none, we've got a ton of weights, right? We have 87,000 over here, 72,000 over here. When we remove all of these, you can see now they're all gone, right? They cannot be rolled. So the likelihood of us hitting this is much, much, much better, right? So harvest is gonna be super, super critical. Now we can use this tool to kind of get a bearing on what it's gonna to cost to put something together. And I really like using this. You can do all kinds of different options. If you don't wanna use currencies, you can talk about fossils and you can do the exact same thing. I'm, I'm looking for this physical. We could, we could pick percent physical and go for something sort of realistic. 
which is, I mean, that's still pretty rare. You can either do compute best selection, which runs this, runs optimizer, and then it tells you these are the best fossils you can use uh, and how many chances or attempts it took to get these two mods together on a weapon, right? Which in a lot of these, like here's 131 tries for carotid, dense, jagged, and sanctified. Now, if we were going to go that route, you'd have to co compute the cost of these fossils plus the the resonator, it could get very, very expensive, right? So making these, in my opinion, your best route is to go the, the you know, alteration spam. Uh, so you're gonna transmute, alt, and I'm gonna demonstrate this just for, just so that you guys can see me go through this process here in a second. But using alts and augs and regals to get yourself into a position where you have at least one of those things that we're looking for of the two priorities that high percent fizz or high flat fizz is what i'm ultimately going to start with and then i'm going to go from there using other currencies to get closer and closer and when harvest is out i'm going to use harvest to go okay i want a physical modifier right or i want to you know so that i can try and get those things like bring that pool down even further right? so let's jump over and look at a fossil or an actual sword here and kind of talk about this step now this can be very tedious and some people hate doing this kind of crafting but this stuff is what I love. I actually started falling in love with this game doing regular old, you know, transmute alterations, augmentations, and regals, right? I just love doing it. So what you're going to do is transmute to turn it into a magic item, meaning that it can have it either one prefix, one suffix, or both when it turns magic. And when you use an alteration orb, it's going to re-roll those two. And sometimes it'll give you one. It has the, the likelihood of giving either one of, of, a prefix or suffix or both right so and we just kind of keep cruising until we see physical right this is a tier eight which is very very low we're looking for anything in the three you know three or higher or three or lower i guess i should say so we want three to one right and it can be you know percent physical or regular physical but it can be a very tedious process now determining when i want to use a regal or, or an augmentation orb if i get one of the potential suffixes sometimes then i will also use one just to see if i get lucky all right so if i get a decently high attack speed roll then i'm going to use a an augmentation if there's an open prefix and a regal if there's if uh, both prefix and suffix is full so we'll just keep cruising and see if we get lucky for the video if not at least i've gone through the process so you can kind of see exactly what it is that you would do on your own to kind of start working your way through making yourself that's something that's useful so we've got 43% physical, tier eight, 130%. So this is a tier four, this is a pretty good roll. I'm gonna go ahead and aug this and see what I get. 21 strength, nothing yet. So we got 15% attack speed, which is tier five, not amazing. And we've got 130% physical damage. Now right here, right here with our 20% quality, we could come to our bench add flat physical damage to this sword as much as we can right so up to tier three craft this and then let's just take a look at what this this weapon looks like so if you control c on this item and then pull up pov you can control v in here and then you can see right away okay this weapon that we just made has 311 physical dps Okay, just on its own. So all we've done so far is we've we hit a decent roll, which isn't in which isn't even in the criteria for when I'm talking about getting into something really, really solid. We're at that T4, right? I wanted three, two, or one, but this is pretty good, right? So 311 physical DPS. We have attack speed. Uh, we have, uh, and then we've added some flat fists right there. This weapon basically beats out just about any unique out there that you're going to be able to use as supplementary when you're when you're leveling. Now, just for kicks, even though we're at the very tail end of the league, we can go into here and take a look and see what something that's just 311, 311, one hand, non-unique, jeweled foil, and do a search. And just from that, we got a 312 for 1x. We got a, you know, 327 for one point, you know, 1.5 but that's been up for a long long time you know 358 i mean we could easily get a chunk of chaos for something like this right that was pretty simple for us to do 
very fast. And if we were doing it for our own character, this is a really nice one-hander for starting out. Okay, this is not something that I would say is, is you know, not great right now. In, in other instances, if we hadn't hit attack speed, but we did get some flat fizz, like a lower roll flat fizz, I would come over here and craft myself attack speed. And there is another suffix. Instead of just going with the base attack speed, you can do attack speed and quality, I believe. Let's do... Attack speed, oops. attack speed and quality right so even though that's a 1x craft if this if this is a pretty good you know this we've got a lower one for a divine right so i can get myself 10 percent and bring that flat fizz up and get myself some attack speed right so in instances where you get a a pretty god tier sword you can put that on there and you can also then start stepping into the multi-mod aspect which gives you you know add three crafted modifiers and you can add this and you can add you know any any uh, type of percent percent physical that's available if you got one of the hybrids or or any of those things right so just for for new players i think right now we just created with with very little effort a really nice starter physical weapon now with that being said i will be doing some more guides in the future as to the meta crafting that we're going to do during harvest and kind of talking about going through those chains but just keep in mind as we just talked about with the specific with the specific craft of exile page that we looked at before when we're talking about harvest strength right if we get said modifier that they've talked about where add a physical modifier we're going to start getting into the area where we can really, really max out these weapons. I'm talking, you know, through the roof. So Harvest, even though, I, I mean, it's been up and down. When we're talking about it on stream, some people are really stoked, some people aren't. But I would say overall, if you're even new to crafting and you're starting to dip your toes in and you're really, you know, kind of enjoying the process so far, this is going to enable you to do really, really nice crafts that typically would cost somebody that does meta crafting a ton of currency and you're going to get the opportunity to do this very very cheap guys i hope this guide was helpful and helped you guys learn more about the process of why we prioritize physical on these weapons and how to start out at least crafting a nice basic weapon for your character that you can sell and then turn around and start upping that ante because remember once you've identified how your main gem scales and what things make that gem more efficient and powerful, just like we did with Double Strike, then you can start theory crafting what you want to build by utilizing PoEDB, uh, you know, the wiki to find a base, and then Craft of Exile to then go in and see, okay, what are the best currencies? What are the best way to remove balls from the lottery spinner? Because that's what we're doing. We're just rolling the dice and hoping that we win big. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you haven't seen my other crafting guides, definitely check them out. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'll be streaming uh, Harvest. I've been streaming a lot of World of Warcraft lately because we're you know in that, that phase between leagues. But I will be playing Harvest full bore once it, once it drops. And if you guys have any questions, even if I'm not on POE, stop by the stream and hit me up. It's twitch.tv slash Trapaduski. Thank you guys so, so much for all the support. And we'll be having more videos soon. Peace.